Kasich is in third with 21 percent. Senator Rubio has 13 percent. Here now with reaction, 2016 Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump. Mr. Trump, good to see you. There's also a, a Fox 2 poll that has you up by 18, so it's 13, 18, and 22 in the biggest state in tomorrow's wow. contest. How do you feel about where you are in Michigan? Well, you just made me feel very good. I hadn't heard these numbers. Those numbers are really terrific. Well, I, I love the people of Michigan. I've been fighting hard for them with the car industry. I'm constantly talking about the car companies moving out and going to Mexico and other places, Sean, and they know I will protect them. I will not let it happen. We're not going to lose our industries anymore. We've been the foolish country for so long with this free trade, but it's not free trade because it's you know, it just doesn't work. I mean, it's not working. You look at the deficits we have. So uh, I think Michigan and the people of Michigan know, really, they know that I'm going to protect them. They're great people. You know, everyone says when you talk about this that you're going to fight for, for tougher trade deals. They say, oh, that's protectionist. I don't hear that from you. I hear you're going to go in there, right. bang on the table and get better trade deals that will, will fix this imbalance, especially with countries like China and Mexico. I don't hear, I've never heard you say the word protectionist. Not one time, but some of your opponents say Not that. What's all. your answer? Not at all. Well, they say it for their own reasons. Look, I love free trade. I love the concept of free trade. Everything about it is good. I went to the Wharton School of Finance. I see India and Mexico. Mexico is killing us at the border, and they're killing us with trade. You look at Ford. Ford is building a $2.5 billion plant in Mexico to make cars, trucks, and parts. So uh, it has nothing to do with anything. I love free trade. But we need great leadership to have real free trade. And we don't have good leadership. We have leadership that doesn't know what it's doing. The people of Michigan and the people of our country, we've lost our industries, such a big chunk of our industries and our jobs. And I'm not going to let that happen. It won't happen anymore, believe me. All right, Mr. Trump, I would argue that this is now a two-man race. And unless Senator Rubio and John Governor Kasich start showing some wins and putting them on the board, uh, to me, it's a two-man race. Um, I think you agree with that. You said you want to go mano a mano with Ted Cruz. He says he wants the same with you. Here's, I want to ask you this question, because it's the question I'm and most frequently asked about you. And as I go on social media, it seems to be a very strong Trump contingent, and people aren't budging. You have strong supporters and Ted Cruz supporters, and, and there's a battle now going on between you two. And the, the single most named criticism or question I get, tell me where Donald Trump is conservative. Explain how he'll be conservative. And I want to give you that, that opportunity sure, to like explain to, to people. Because necessarily, because a label doesn't mean very much. But when it comes to being conservative, I happen to be conservative. I'm very, very strong on energy independence, as you know. And I think that's the most conservative position. And I have the most conservative position on that. I'm very, very so-called conservative on the military. I want a very, very strong military. I want to build up. You know, our military is totally depleted. We're going to take care of our vets as part of that whole situation because our vets are not taken care of properly. Nobody is more conservative when it comes to trade than I am. Now, you can go and you can say, well, gee, I'm not a free trader, but I am a free trader, but I'm also a fair trader and a smart trader. I want to make sure that the United States gains something. So I think you would probably agree. You've been dealing with me for a long time, No, Sean. I agree. I, I want, agree to, I want better trade deals. I yeah. agree with you. No, we want smart trade. We want trade that's going to be beneficial for us, not just suck all our jobs and our money out of our system. If you look at what China's done to us over the last 15 years, it's just horrible. It's, a, it's outrageous that they get away with it. I'm certainly, when it comes to health care, I mean, we want to repeal and replace Obamacare. We're, we're going to repeal. Obamacare is a total disaster for this country, a total and complete disaster. We're going to come up with plans, and there are lots of alternatives. We're going to come up with plans that are far less expensive, better for the people and better for the country. I'm certainly very conservative when it comes to education. We're getting rid of Common Core. We're going to have education at a local level. I mean, there are so many different things. I'm really very conservative when you get right down to it. But I don't like even taxes. necessarily yeah. you know, cut taxes. Well, my plan, actually, Larry Kudlow, who's a fantastic guy, I think likes my plan the most. I'm cutting taxes by about the most. And, you know, we're the highest tax nation in the world. Our middle class is, is just reeling from the taxes. And, you know, if you think about it, the middle class and the workers of this country who really built the country, they haven't had a raise in 12 years. They're making less now, actually, to be even worse about it. They're making less now than they did 12 years ago. I'm in Mississippi right now. I have a 
group of 8,000 people I'm going to speak to. And the people came up to me just a little while ago and they said, you know, Mr. Trump, we're making less money now than we made eight and 10 and 12 years ago. And that shouldn't be. That's not true with a lot of other countries. It just shouldn't be. Yeah, I mean, median income is down thousands of dollars, millions more in poverty on food stamps and out of the labor force. So right. you, you, because I've interviewed you so often, it's kind of amazing to me that people don't hear it. And I'm trying to explain to people because I think there's some people that are saying they're going to pick up their toys and go home if their guy doesn't win. But you're, you want America energy independent. Hillary doesn't want that. You're going to be strong on the military. Well, that's straight out of Reagan's playbook. Uh, trade, which you just mentioned, right. Obamacare. You also said it, when you, gave your specifics that you support health care savings accounts. Uh, that's on your website 100%. right now. Yeah. 100%. It's so simple, so good. It's so much less expensive. It's much better. You can have your plan. You really have an asset. You can go anywhere with it, you know, beyond state lines. You can do whatever you want with it. Uh, you know, it's just so much better. And you know what? It gives people the incentive to negotiate because it's theirs. It's not, you're not dealing with government bureaucrats. It's theirs. It's their money. They want to spend as little as possible. Right now, they walk in and they say, give me everything under the kitchen sink. I mean, the people have an incentive to spend wisely. So the health care savings accounts are such a good thing. It's such a good idea. And it's time for it. I know you've liked it for years. I've been hearing you long before I really knew too much about it. And then, you know, a few years ago, I started really looking. And it was always amazing to me that the politicians didn't, they hardly even considered it when they were talking about Obamacare. And, between and energy, Obamacare is just a disaster. Between energy independence, the repatriated money at a low tax rate to incentivize companies to bring back money they, they had parked overseas that would be highly taxed if they bring it back. Uh, those two things, I think, would go a long way to grow in the economy, creating millions of jobs. Uh, and on top of that, spending less. And I think I'm pulling you in on the penny plan, at least in areas outside the military? Yeah. Well, I like the concept of the penny plan. I, I, not for the military, because the military we have to build up. But we can say probably in many cases more than a penny if you look at it. I mean, the penny plan is a pretty a pretty good plan. It's a pretty simple plan. And, you know, it's it's something I think in some cases uh, a penny is nothing compared to the kind of numbers. Then you get to fraud, waste and abuse, Sean. I mean, the, the fraud and the waste and the abuse, which everybody agrees if you can solve that problem. But it's it's, you know, mind boggling, the kind of numbers. So we can get our budgets in place. The one thing we really have to take care of, you know, the health care is going to be less money and we're going to have much better health care. So let money. me ask this. Just so you understand. Yeah, I, I don't I don't want to. Interrupt, but, but, you know, because you could also add to your list, I guess, you're conservative on immigration. You're conservative on the issue of people, uh, refugees coming into the country. Uh, well, enhanced I'm, I'm interrogation. the most conservative. Yeah. So my question sure. is, when, I, when I your opponents say you're. When your opponents say you're not conservative, why don't you say all that to them? Because I've watched you in debates, and I'm just curious why you haven't just said I'm conservative here, 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 and here. I don't know. I, I think, you know, you're given 30 seconds. You're given an answer of 30 seconds in these crazy debates. And, you know, according to <laughs> Drudge and all of the people that do the polls, no, it's ridiculous. I mean, they have, you know, Mr. Trump, uh, explain why you're conservative. You have uh, 19 seconds left, okay? <laughs> uh, and, again, I like I the conservative laugh, label, but, it's but true. I don't think... Yeah. I know, but it's true. It's like, you know, you have 19 seconds <laughs> yeah. to speak. Um, I, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you that, uh, like, Obamacare is an example. It's going to die of its own weight, but we have to kill it sooner. It's going to die of its own weight. You know, in 17, it's so astronomical and so expensive. And if you look at what that's doing to the labor force, Sean, where people are, have part-time jobs, people that never had a part-time job in their lives, people that have worked for a company for 20 years and 30 years are now working for the same company as a part-timer because of Obamacare, because of the basic advantages to doing that in terms of Obamacare for an employer. So there are so many problems that we have that we can straighten out so simply. But no, I'm a conservative. I would say that you just said it best right now because who is better than me on the border and with immigration? Sheriff Joe Arpaio, a great guy, but you would say he's a tough cookie, okay? Okay. He endorsed me last week because I'm the best on immigration. And I think by his definition of the best, it's the best and the toughest. And I got Sheriff Joe yeah. to endorse me last week. And he called up. He said, 
You're the right guy. You're the toughest guy for it. And, you know, that's, that's a pretty good thing. We got to take a break. I want to ask you about what Mitt Romney said in his brokered convention idea, which John Kasich said is exciting. I think it's a bad idea. Well, more with 2016 Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump right after this break. Quick programming note. This Wednesday, we'll be interviewing Mr. Trump for the hour in Fayetteville, North Carolina at the Crown Center Arena in front of a crowd. If you want to be there and if you live in and around the area, just go over to Hannity.com right now. Find out all the details. Sign up for the event. And we hope to see you in Fayetteville two days from now. More Hannity right after this break. What makes Thermacare different? Two words, it heals. How? With heat. Unlike creams and rubs that mask the pain, Thermacare has patented heat cells that penetrate deep to increase circulation and accelerate healing. Let's review. Heat plus relief plus healing equals Thermacare. The proof that it heals is you. The Lexus Command Performance Sales Event is on with extraordinary offers on the exhilarating IS, the thrilling GS, and the powerful RC Coupe. This is the pursuit of perfection. How did the Food Saver 2-in-1 become the top-rated vacuum sealing system? Simple. When you have more ways to seal and more ways to save. When you have the best performing vacuum storage bags. When you keep food fresh up to five times longer. When 95% of consumers would recommend the Food Saver system. Years old. That's a look at news. I'm Kelly Wright. Now, back to Hannity. And welcome back to Hannity. We continue now with 2016 Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump. All right, before I get to the brokered convention, your campaign came out with a brand new ad today against Marco Rubio. Florida is a very big state. You're leading there. To me, it's a must win for Marco. Um, let's roll this ad. Corrupt Marco Rubio has spent years defrauding the people of Florida. As a legislator, he flipped on a key vote after making a quick 200000 from selling his house to the mother of the bill's lobbyist. He used the Republican Party's credit card to pave his driveway and to live it up in Las Vegas. When he got caught, he said he had used the wrong credit card. But he had used the same Republican Party card for six flights between Miami and Tallahassee. Then, billed the state for the same airline tickets and pocketed the cash until, once again, he got caught. On top of it all, Rubio's been a total no-show in the U.S. Senate with the worst voting record of all. Marco Rubio, another corrupt, all-talk, no-action politician. All right, Mr. Trump, respond to that ad. Why is that important? I read that they're going to put $25 million or more in ads against you, so it's going to be pretty brutal in Florida. Well, I think it's important because I've been hearing about it for years. Actually, Jeb Bush brought it up at the debate, and he was doing it very well, and all of a sudden, I don't know what happened, but he got shut down. And uh, Jeb, in all fairness, he should have kept going with that. I think he would have made a big point that night. But he brought up the credit card situation. He brought up some other things about Marco. Look, Marco's had this hanging over his head for a long time. I live in Florida, practically. You know, it's my second home. I have a lot of businesses there. I employ thousands and thousands of people. I own Trump National Doral, which just had the big golf tournament that was won by Adam Scott yesterday. And, you know, it's, it's, I know so much about Florida. I've been hearing about his credit card problems for so long, uh, what he did with the Republican Party. You had people that were doing the checking, accounting people and other people. I mean, they were devastated that nothing was done with Rubio because of what he did. And, you know, it says it in the yeah. ad. Now, maybe he can prove otherwise, but it says it very, very well in the ad. In addition to that, a total non-show senator. I mean, he was elected. He defrauded the people of Florida. He was elected to be a senator. He was elected to go and vote on important matters. And he's all over the country. He's not voting. I mean, he's not voting. And this is beyond just the electoral, you know, the, the election stuff. He doesn't go to the United States Senate. I must say, if I were a United States Senator, I would be so honored to be in that magnificent chamber voting for the people of Florida. And I think the people of Florida are fed up. I don't think he can. I mean, I may be wrong, but I don't think he can be elected dog catcher in Florida. I was I have so many. You know, I, I'm in Florida all the time. I just left Florida. Yeah to come to Mississippi. I'm going back to Florida. And I'll tell you what, the people in Florida think that he's literally defrauded them because you look at what he does. He never goes and votes. He's never over there. Well, let he's me got ask one this. of the worst records of voting in history. 
18 of the 20 contests now have been won by outsiders, insurgents, and you have won the overwhelming majority of them. Ted Cruz is in second place, and, you know, Marco won Minnesota, and he won Puerto Rico yesterday. Okay, fair enough, but the establishment has thrown all this money, and I assume they'll throw tens of millions more against you. And then we have this, this equation that is now emerging, and that is, okay, Let's prevent, let's keep all these guys in, let's push Rubio in, in Florida, let's push Kasich in Ohio. John Kasich says, oh, that's exciting to have a brokered convention. That seems to me to be designed purposely to stop either you or Ted Cruz, whoever has more delegates at the end of this. If you don't make 1237, why do I believe that that is purposely being done to stop you? Do you not see it that way? Well, I think you're right. It's designed to stop somebody. Maybe it's me because I've won a lot more than Ted has won. But Ted is certainly in second place, and Marco is doing very, very poorly. And I will tell you, it's done for some reason. I, you know, one of the biggest stories in all of politics, worldwide, in all of politics in this country for decades, is what's happened with the Republican Party. Do you know that people coming out to vote are up 50, 60, 70 percent? It's a massive. And in a couple of states, it was it's over 100 percent. Yeah. I will take full credit for that, by the way. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm taking 100% okay. credit. But forget no, that. No, I don't doubt forget that that's a big part of it. But, but you any... know that this is, this is the biggest story in all of politics worldwide. And people talk about it, but they don't talk about it. This is such a great thing for the Republican Party. And instead of dividing and fighting, we should take advantage of it. And you know who the people are that are coming out to vote? Democrats and independents. They're coming out by the millions. We have millions, five million people coming out to vote out of nowhere. It's never happened before. I've been on the cover of Time magazine just about, 